My title is, We Cannot Be Shaken. Now, I know the title's been fluid. I started out by talking about the unshakable Christian, but I wanted it to be more personal. So I wrote, I cannot be shaken. And I thought, that's true, that's good. But there is a sense of corporateness about our victory in Christ that God wants us to learn. So I settled finally on we cannot be shaken. Together, we cannot be shaken. And when we stand together in Christ's name, we can overcome anything that the enemy or anything else throws against us. Let's read Hebrews 13 verses 5 through 8. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. If you reflect back on your Christmas presents, you said to auntie, well, you shouldn't have. No, you really shouldn't have. Let me say to you, in the name of auntie, be content. All right. All right, contentedness is a very big blessing because our eyes are on the Lord. Okay, let's go on to say, be content with such things as you have, for he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. Underline that. I will not fear what can man do to me. We're going to deal with that spirit of intimidation and God is going to give you a holy boldness tonight. Then verse 7 goes on, very important. Remember those who rule over you or who lead you is a better word, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow. Considering the outcome of their conduct, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, in the world today, and in all societies and lots of different nations in the world as I travel, there are very few things which are sure, certain, and secure in the material realm. But when we as Christians recognize that, Now, that is not the time to be intimidated. That is the time to praise God because he's drawing our eyes away from the merely natural, and he understands we need all that stuff, but drawing our eyes away from the merely natural to the supernatural kingdom of God because we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Now, one of the wonderful things about this preparation word, and uh, what I want you to get out of the message, is there's certain basic things that you and I must keep in mind. They're not complicated. They are simple. But at the end of the day, I do not apologize for being simple if I am simply pointing out the, the day-to-day basic things of basic Christian living And the assurance of God is this, as we take care of the basics, he's going to throw everything on top of that, and he's going to take care of the rest. Amen and amen. Now, when God's presence shows up, things get shaken. That's very important to know. Some people think, I want a new move of God. I want to experience the presence of God. I want to experience the glory of God. But when God shows up, things get shaken. You never know what's going to happen when God shows up. You remember the time when Isaiah had a vision of the Lord there in the temple and the train of his temple, the robe of his temple, his garment filled the temple and the doorposts were shaken, the foundation was shaken. This is something we can be sure about. Whenever God shows up, he shakes us to our foundations. And so God is saying, I'm coming to show up in power, in authority, and I want you to be ready Because when I move, I'm going to shake everything that can be shaken. When we think about the foundation of God, the Bible says, 
that God laid the foundation of the earth. Remember he said to Job, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? God founded the physical universe. He created it out of nothing and by his word it is established and by his word it is sustained. So we have nothing to fear other than recognizing that God is in control. But not only has God gone around founding things on this earth, he has also founded and established his kingdom in heaven. The Bible says God has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all things. So there is some basic facts about Bible revelation. God is in charge. God is in control. He created this. He's going to sort it out. And he's going to make manifest his kingdom that cannot be shaken in this earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Amen and amen. So let's talk about three things this, this evening. I'm going to talk about the foundation, talk about confidence, and talk about boldness. Okay. The foundation. Now these verses show that there is a foundation here. Did you see the foundation? It's in verse 5. Jesus says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That is a foundational revelation. And if all you had and all I had was that one verse, that's enough to take us from the cross right the way through into heaven itself. He's never going to leave you. He is never going to forsake you. I want to say that again. I want you to drink it in. Jesus says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Even in those times when you don't feel my presence, even in those times when you don't see my plan, even though all hell appears to be raised against you, know this, I am with you and I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. You will not be forsaken in life. You will not be forsaken in death. He has promised. It is a sure word, a word that you can depend on, a word that you can found your life on. He is always with you. Amen and amen. He isn't just with you when you think you're doing well. He isn't just with you when you've got seven out of seven quiet times in this last week. He isn't just with you when your best friend has come to Christ. He isn't just with you when you've laid hands on some sick person and they've been healed. He isn't just with you when words of knowledge flow from your lips and bring encouragement to others. He is with you in the times when you appear to be fruitful and he is with you in the other times, in the down times. Now, I've learned in, in my life that some of the most precious moments I've ever had has been in the darkest times in my life. When even in the darkness, all I can do is reach out. And when I reach out, he is there. And just hold on to him, not knowing up from down, not knowing east from west, so shaken by the circumstances, I hold on to the unshakable Christ, his foundation that he says, I will never leave you. And also this foundation is mentioned in verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, it's a strong word for a group of people, even if it's just one person here tonight or in the other venue watching online. You have very recently, it's, it's, it's in strong, vivid memory, you have very recently realized that People who've been speaking to you and promising things to you have let you down and they don't even think twice about it and you were depending on them. Some were depending on them for a loan and investment in a business. Maybe it's a bank manager, maybe it's a friend. Some of you have been depending on people helping you provide accommodation for you. All kinds of things people have been promising. Maybe even in the area of relationships, people have been promising you great things and you discover there were empty promises they were made maybe 
sincerely in one sense, maybe they meant it at the time, but circumstances changed and now you are left disappointed and not knowing what to do. I've got a word for you from the, from the Bible. Though my mother and my father forsake me, the Lord will not forsake me. He will lift me up. God knows about that disappointment. And he says, I will never disappoint you. And he says, watch this space because you're going to see why it all happened. At the moment, you can't understand. You're too disappointed. But you're going to see why it all happened. Because that set of circumstances, if they played out to the full, you would be the worst for it. But he is giving you new sources of supply. He's giving you new people in your life and new contracts and new ideas. And the new is much better. Give Jesus a praise for that. Amen and amen. So the foundation... The foundation is Jesus Christ himself. Maybe we didn't recognize it as a foundation because he just said, I'm with you. But that's the foundation of everything. It's so personal. And, and one of the things that we have to come to grips with is that many people in different religions, they have different ideas, but our faith is many, many things, but at the top of the list, it is personal. It's all about a person, Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, and he is the one who holds thing, everything together, and he is the ultimate reality of the universe. I'd rather have God on my side than a thousand bank managers. I'd rather have Jesus in my life than anything else to get my security from. And I really want to minister this to you tonight. I want you to check out your foundation. Where does my security come from? Where does my financial security come from? And of course, we must be practical. Pennies from heaven, well, it happens ever so occasionally. If God sent ravens to feed Elijah, he would maybe send some strange people to take care of you. And we know God has many vehicles and instruments that he uses, but we never look to man. We look to God. Our dependence is on God. If God is in that business, my friend, that loan will come through. That loan will come through. Or God will make a way where there is no way. So it is about walking with Jesus. No greater foundation than walking with Jesus. And he is the rock. He is the rock Christ Jesus. I like that psalm. The Lord listened patiently. I cried out to the Lord in my distress. He listened patiently. He inclined his ear. And I love this. I love this because I, there was a lady who was giving a testimony on this in West, West Africa. And I, I didn't know what she was talking about. I had to ask somebody, what is potter potter? Anyway, she said, take my feet out of the potter potter, which is the Myri Claire, take my feet out of the potter potter. And everybody was, it was going through the actions. My feet are coming out of the potter potter, out of the Myri Clay. And he's established me on a firm rock. And I'm going to sing a hymn of praise to my God. I'm standing on a firm foundation, for I cannot be shaken. God's people cannot be shaken. We cannot be shaken. Some of that potter potter is still on you. Don't worry about that. You walk through the potter potter, you stand on the rock, it doesn't matter. You look at your feet are dirty. Your feet are full of potter potter. Yes, my feet are full of potter potter, but my feet are not in potter potter. My feet are upon the rock, Christ Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just a bit more volume up here. And um, so the, 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 the thing about that is that the, Jesus himself is the foundation. Never forget that Jesus himself is the foundation. And um, this, this year I put out on one of my tweets, I did it in Portuguese for the, for the social media ministry in, in, in Brazil. And, uh, and it's a, it's a thought-provoking ministry. I'm ministering to many people who don't yet believe in Jesus and people who are following and interacting with me. Many of them are atheists and all kinds of stuff, but they, they love, and I give them thought-provoking uh, comments. And so here it is, Jesus is the reason for the season, so many people say. But what is the reason for Jesus? Now that's to provoke them. Now I say that because we have reasons to believe. It's not just an idea. Somebody says, your mama says, you better listen to your mama, she's always right. Your mama says, believe in Jesus, you believe in Jesus. Okay. But there is something which we can learn about how substantial this is, how sure our faith is. I'm not going to go into it tonight. 
We did a lot of work this last year on it, but I want every believer to be able not just to say, this is what I believe, but this is why I believe what I believe. So somebody will say to me, why are you a Christian? Now, depending on the kind of nature of the conversation, I will talk something like this, but very soon I will say there is one reason, I'm testifying here tonight, there is only one reason why I'm a Christian, and that is because of Jesus. Now, what I mean by that is not just, of course, if you're a Christian, you believe in Jesus, but when I look at the life of Jesus, when I understand that the gospel stories go right back to testimony from the very, very beginning, even at this stage, it doesn't matter who wrote the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay, but even that's not significant because I witnessed testimony of people who heard what Jesus said. And t- so we now know that substantially we can prove it even without the Holy Spirit because we do work with the Holy Spirit. But even people who don't believe in God have to admit that we have an accurate record of what Jesus did and what Jesus said. Right, and move on from there. Well, what did he do? What did he say? Many, many, many things. But there is one event that makes it so real and that we can believe even now, 2,000 years later, because the evidence is still with us, that Jesus is not dead, but he is alive. If Jesus had been crucified on the cross, he would have died perhaps as a martyr. Maybe it was some gesture, but when he was raised again from the dead, don't forget he prophesied, I will lay my life down and I will take it up. He is saying, I'm going to demonstrate that I am the Lord of the resurrection and the life. And if I'm the Lord of the resurrection and the life, I am Lord of everything. I'm Lord over all of your life. I can meet your every need. I can meet your every, I can be your every supply. So put your faith in me. The resurrection of Jesus Christ proved that he is everything that he said. I am a believer in Christ because of the evidence. Amen and amen. And you say, well, I never came that way. Fine. Fine. You maybe never came that way. Probably I never came that way. But over the years, I've learned to give a reason for the hope that is within me. And when you can walk out into any platform, any arena, and just speak out, whether it's in your office, television, interview, wherever you are, and you can speak out with confidence that it's not just your personal belief that you believe Jesus is alive, but there is evidence that Jesus is alive. And our faith is personal. Our faith also is historical. So it rests on fact. Many people believe today that faith is, is, is really just an, a nice thing. It doesn't give you any contact with any reality. You believe it, and, and it, because you believe it, it's, you, it's true for you. Somebody else believes something else, and it's true for them. And the worst thing you can ever do is to tell them to believe what you believe, because that's an infringement on their own personal life. But the truth is, if Jesus is raised from the dead, then that is true whether anybody believes it or not, and the consequences of that will be with us whether we believe it or not. Therefore, it is wise to line ourselves up with confidence and build our life on the rock Christ Jesus. I've studied a great deal about other religions and what the Lord has given me over the past two or three years is many friends that I've made contact with who don't yet know Jesus, some are gradually coming to Christ, and it's wonderful, but they're into all kinds of stuff. And you you can go and read a book about Islam, you can go and read a book about Buddhism, you can go and read a book about atheism or the New Age. And, and yet, when I meet people who are coming exactly from that perspective, what I learn is amazing. Two things I learn, one thing, is they are looking for the same thing that we have been looking for. Second thing is we have what they're looking for. We have what they're looking for. And there there is no foundation for anything else other than Christ Jesus. The Bible says in um, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 11, no other foundation... Can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ? Amen and amen. All right. Who laid that foundation? God laid that foundation. All right. Because God has only got one building plan. He only needs one foundation. He's building his kingdom. 
Amen and amen. He's building the church. He's building your life. And the blessings rest on those who rest on the rock. The blessing rests on those who rest on the rock. Very simple message. Very simple message. Grab it, take it. It'll take you way into 2018 and beyond. And what this basically means is make sure you stick to the main thing. Always stick to the main thing. Now, uh, if I was a musician, the same thing would apply. But I was not a musician. I was a dancer. A long time ago, and I know you would never believe it now, and there's no idea because, uh, you know, although... You know, I, I've left the theatre a long, long time ago, and there is not even a hint of any kind of dramatics about me at all. Uh, I, I'm very straight lace. Okay, so every day, whether you felt like it or not, you would be at that bar, that's the ballet bar, just in case some of you are worried, at the bar doing the most basic exercises. And if you go and watch a concert pianist prepare for the concert, on the day of the concert, whether they do some, uh, do some um, repetition of, 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 of what they're going to play, but very often you'll just find them doing just scale after scale after scale. A singer warming up. Our singers, who are the most illustrious singers in this part of London, every, every morning, Sunday morning, 8 o'clock, we hear them doing their warming up exercises and doing basic, basic, basic scales. This is so simple, don't miss it. Many people think, what new thing must I find? What new teaching must I follow? What is happening out there on the internet that's not being preached in my own home church? If it's not being preached in your own home church, there's probably a good reason for it, okay? And they follow all kinds of ideas, fanciful ideas, all kinds of stuff without a shred of biblical evidence. And what normally happens is somebody stands up with a testimony and they would say, I was a teenage werewolf and then this happened to me and now I'm shaved I, or whatever. Whatever they say. And there's an amazing testimony and I do not uh, deny their testimony, okay? But... The mistake is, if you do what I did, if you follow my formula, you'll have a testimony like me. And, and so many Christians down through the years have been disillusioned by following all these sidetrack issues. But God is calling us to put all our effort into the main thing because this is what God wants to do. God wants to glorify Christ. That was being said here tonight on the platform. God wants to glorify Christ. Put all your eggs in one basket. Get to know him. Get to know everything you can about him. Walk with him. Talk with him. Listen to him. He's with you by the Holy Spirit. Just stick to the main thing. Now, what's going to happen in the near future is that there's going to be a lot of attempts to draw people away from the simplicity that there is in Christ. Because when things start to shake up, people get nervous, but you never need to get nervous if your feet are on the rock Christ Jesus, okay? So keep the main thing for the main thing. Make Christ central. Make it so simple. When you talk to one another, Talk to one another about Jesus. He is the same yesterday and today and forever. He's never going to change. And it's that sounds boring. No, no, no. Because there's so much of him, plenty to go around. I don't think even heaven will give us enough opportunity to fully get to know him and the glories that are in him and the wonder and the majesty of God and the whole plan of salvation and all that he does, his wondrous grace, his amazing capacity to bless you and take you through life school of the Holy Spirit so that every step you take you can be sure it is ordered by the Lord. Isn't what the Bible says? The steps of a righteous man are what? They're ordered by the Lord and if you are righteous by faith in Christ, God is ordering your steps, your footsteps. I want to build confidence in you tonight. I want you to understand you are right where you should be and stay there. Don't ever move from there because there's only one foundation and that's Christ and we build on him.
We build on him. Remember Matthew's gospel? Jesus preached the Sermon on the Mount, and he says, therefore, it's, it's, I don't have time to read it all, Matthew 7, 24 to 27, it's coming up on the screen. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. But it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, and floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell. And great was its fall. Okay, notice what Jesus does not say. Check to see what popular opinion is. Check to see what society is telling you. Check to see what the uh, chat shows are talking about. Check, check to see what's trending on the internet. And, and that's where you'll get guidance for your life. Or how about this one? You know, just find out what other people think you should do. And go around 10, 15, 20 people until you find somebody who agrees with you and go with that. No, 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 no. He says, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them. So we have our lives founded on the rock. And he says, this is how you build. This is how you build. Every day you build on this beautiful foundation. And the tragedy is, if we could see the glorious foundation that God has given us for our lives, we would be disappointed sometimes with our lack of faith and how little we build on him. Imagine somebody being given a plot of land on the latest seafront development on the western coast of the United States of America. And there you are, it's all free and, and everything's organized. You've got plans, you've got everything. And they say, when you buy this, not only have you got the plans, but the foundation is already laid. So you can build now without nothing too big. Is, you can't build anything too big. This foundation is solid. It's going to sustain anything that you have. And so you say, oh, well, this is near the sea. I think I'll build a chalet, a little wooden chalet, get out there in my long johns and twiddle my toes in the water and come back again. And I think so many of us are building tin shacks on the great foundation of Christ. But the moment you say, no, 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 I'm going to build big, and building big isn't about having big ideas for yourself, but it's recognizing how big he is. And there is so much that he wants to give you. Take care of the central things. Take care of the main things. And God will take care of everything else. Now, one of the things that we sometimes go wrong, don't misunderstand me, prayer is very important in praying specifically and persistently. However... You know, whenever there is a need in my life, I'm tempted to go to the promises that speak to that need. And sometimes the promises leap out at you, and sometimes you have to wrench them from the Bible. You want every verse, every word to speak about your need. But you know, the moment you do that, you're taking your eyes off Christ and putting them on the problem. Why don't you keep your eyes on Christ and let him speak to you? Just one word from the Master will see you through. Just one word, one word, whatever problem you have, one word from the master. And the way that God speaks to us, of course, is supremely through the word. Keep your heart in the word, your mind in the word continually. And when you, when you do that and you're walking in the word, then God has some reference points by which he can speak into your life. And so it's not just the words of Scripture, as important as that is, God will give you understanding and he will lead you and he will speak to you about details and particulars. It's amazing how specific the Holy Spirit is. So the foundation is Christ himself. We build on it, on him, by hearing and doing. Very, very simple message. But you know, friends, that's where so many people go wrong. The moment we get sidetracked into something else, why is it we can't keep Jesus central? Is, is, is a, it, 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 do we get bored with him? And sometimes the preachers, sometimes the preachers are the worst offenders. Because even tonight, 
This word which I have looked at and looked at and looked at is so simple. And, you know, after 155 years in the Christian ministry, and some people actually believe that, surely by now, you should be giving them something more profound. What can be more profound than Christ, than Jesus? I remember visiting a charismatic church somewhere in the world, and I wanted to speak to them about justification by faith. We celebrated the 500th anniversary of the start of the European Reformation when in October uh, 1517, Martin Luther nailed his 95 Theses to the door of the Wittenberg Church. And many people came out and we had some of the best experts in the world talk about that. They, they, they boggled our minds. They, 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 stretched, they stretched my brains. My brain has, has not returned to its normal shape from that time. And I was pleased to be able to do that. But, you know, the real revelation is this. God loves you. He accepts you exactly as you are. He sent his son to die for you and to give you the gift of his righteousness so you enter heaven by the righteousness of Christ. So the moment you believe, you are qualified to enter heaven. It does not depend on how good a Christian life you live, though if you realize how amazing he is, you want to live the best Christian life that he enables you to do, but it is a free gift, a free gift, a free gift. Anybody said, oh, no, no, don't, don't talk about that. We've, we've moved on from that. I said, I beg your pardon? We've moved on from that. We're into, we're into something else now. Don't ever move on from the gospel, friends. Please, 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 don't ever move on from the gospel. R.T. Kendall will be with us very, very soon, and he reminds us to stick with the gospel. It is the gospel which is the power of God for salvation. People are perishing for the lack of understanding, proclamation, and visible manifestation of the gospel in our lives. This is 100% basic, Christ central, the gospel central, following him every day. Now, it's not as if uh, we are always going to be successful in this. Um, I don't want to speak negatively about any of us here today because my intention is not to fail him. I don't get up in the morning and say, I'm going to fail Jesus today. I, I, I want the help of the Holy Spirit that I honor Jesus today. But the truth is, you and I, because we're just disciples, you know. I may have a gift of leadership, but we're just both disciples. All, it's all we are, disciples. And I fail him. And not many preachers will admit that. One preacher said, I have never failed a Jesus in all my life. I thought you just failed him now because you haven't been honest. <laughs> so, you know, what I'm saying is, is that we're human and we're not perfect yet. So it's not about trying to come up to some standard of perfection. Please understand me because our future depends on it. The future move of God depends on this. It's not that we have to do something to attain to something. It means we have to walk in the simplicity of who we are in Christ and God will do the rest. Have you heard the theme? Here it comes back. Stay with the simple, central, foundational things. Be strong in those, be assured in those, and God will give you the rest. Amen and amen. Okay, so here we go. The unshakable Christian, we, the fact that we cannot be shaken depends on the fact that we have a foundation. Now then, our verse goes on to that straight away, and the connection between the two is glorious. Uh, it says, I have, he himself has said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Then verse 6, so we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? Now this is such a principle of daily living. He has said, and if he has said something, of course we believe it, but it doesn't stop there. He has said, 
And every revelation that God has given you is so that you may also say there is a consequence that flows from the revelation of God. He has said that we may boldly say when he speaks he speaks that to empower you to speak very very important let me say that again when he speaks he speaks that you may be emboldened to speak and there is nothing more wonderful than when God's words flow from your mouth with such confidence I remember many many years ago when we were learning uh, in, in, on the, um, very tiny platforms in, in, in Africa, in bush missions. And we were very young back in those days. A team of people went out from Kensington Temple. And, uh, and we learned the principles of moving in the miraculous. And there we were waiting on God. God, use our lips, speak. We don't want to do our own thing. We want to do your thing. Show us what you are doing. Show us. And, and, and they brought a girl into the... Uh, uh, open air meeting. There probably would be no more attending that meeting than about this this bunch of people. And it was in the town of Nakuru, the birthplace of my father in East Africa. And we were there in the center. Nakuru has so totally changed from what it was back then. And, and we, we held an open air meeting. We sang, we preached, we asked people to give their lives to Christ and we prayed for the sick. And they brought a young girl a young girl, I forget how old she was, I've written it down somewhere in my book on healing, or the, the exact age, she was, she was young, and she was brought up from the countryside to attend the deaf school on Monday morning in the town. They, they were walking past, they stood and listened, they were believers, they listened, and, and they wanted me to pray for her. And as soon as I saw her, these words came out of my mouth. Now remember, I'm, I'm, I'm just an apprentice, just learning. I'm still just learning now, but back in those days, I knew even less than, than I know now. And, and, and I, these words came out, she shall speak and she shall hear tonight. And I thought, where did that come from? Because it wasn't Colin Dye. And it certainly wasn't the English colandai or the British colandai. We'll, we'll, we'll bring her here. We'll pray for her. She's just a cute little girl. Could she, could she, coo? Oh, Lord Jesus, we pray for her. Lift up the family. No, she shall speak and she shall hear. They brought her onto the platform. I was working with a Ghanaian evangelist and uh, I looked at him and I said, it's a spirit. Not every sickness is a spirit. Not every affliction is a spirit. You know that? But sometimes people are afflicted in their bodies, which comes from satanic affliction, demonic affliction. And, and he said to himself, didn't say to me, he said to himself, oh, this is going to be easy. The spirit has to listen to us. Anyway, so we brought, brought her up, prayed for her, and, and, and I, uh, we, we, we did what we had to do, rebuked the spirit, and by now, if that's the case, then she should hear, yes? She should hear. So anyway, I stood behind her, asked her what, what was her name. They said her name is Rahab. So I said, Rahab, Rahab. She didn't turn around. She didn't say anything. Rahab, Rahab. I thought, oh boy, 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 boy. Which is the nearest exit? Be me out of here, Scotty. <laughs> and of course, dumb, dumb, dumb. I had my back to her. She'd never heard her name. She couldn't see my lips. She was hearing something. Well, later we, we heard that she was, but at that moment, it looked like it hadn't worked. Then the evangelist, instead of doing, he was very good, he just clapped his hand, clapped his hand behind her. She turned around, clapped, turned around. We brought her to the microphone, and she counted from one to ten. She spoke and heard. And now the next morning, we had a celebration in the little part of town. And they told us the full story, that she'd come up to the uh, uh, big town for... Uh, to go to the deaf school, and she never went to the deaf school. Never went to the deaf school. Yes, give Jesus praise. Because she didn't need to go. Now, that doesn't mean to say that I have a formula for every deaf person. I've prayed for many deaf people, seen many deaf mir miracles, people who are hard of hearing and deaf. But there's timing and God's purpose in everything. So this is not a formula, okay? But God gave me his words. He said she's going to hear and see. He's, she's going to hear and speak. And because he said it, I could boldly say it. Because he said it, I could boldly say it. 
when God speaks to you, don't just keep it to yourself. Well, uh, you know, pray, pray about it. But he gives you his words that you might declare his words over your situation and circumstance. Listen to this statement. I made it many years ago, and it's not original to me, but I do believe it. God's word in your mouth is as powerful as God's word in his mouth. Get it? God's word in your mouth is as powerful as God's word in his mouth because it is God's word. And very often the key from moving into the, from the position of faith to fulfillment is knowing how to hear what he says and boldly say it. Now, it's not that you have to go around with all this. Have you heard this positive confession? Uh, one lady was, oh, how are you? I'm blessed and highly favored. That's good, but how are you? No, I'm blessed and highly favored. One day she said she was best and highly flavored. She, she, she got it wrong. Uh, I'm not criticizing people who like to build on those, those kind of words. But at the e end of the day, you can speak it. You can go into the graveyard and you can say, dry bones live. Dry bones live. And if God hasn't sent you there, then you are wasting your time and also the time of the emergency services who will come to rescue you. You know, we have a very good relationship with uh, Mama Teresa Wairimu in, in Kenya. Mama Teresa Wairimu. And uh, she had indeed many, many others in the great sub-Saharan African revival has seen great miracles, including raisings from the dead. And uh, so she, she has witnessed many of these raisings from the dead. And, and so I was, you know, talking with her, eating with her, the privilege of sitting at the top table, talking, talking, talking. Anyway, I broached the subject. I said, Mama Teresa, miracles. Talk to me about miracles. I love miracles. Yes, yes, Mama, you love miracles. I love them too. So talk to me about raising, raising people from the dead. She stopped, put a knife and fork down. You know, I, got, I, I should know because I was born in Africa. Africans have two modes. Talking and eating. <laughs> there goes silent when there is food. Eating is for eating, talking is for talking. Put a knife and fork down. All this is all she said to me. Ah, for this one, for this one, you have to have a very sure word from God. Then she kept on eating. Talking was done. I won't just say, ladies and gentlemen, for this one, but for anything, anything. Learn, if you haven't learned already, I'm sure you have, learn to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and not just your own fanciful ideas, fanciful ideas. I remember once uh, when I was learning to move in the power of the Holy Spirit, I think Benny Hinn had been around. And we all thought we were Benny Hinn, Mark 2, 3, 4, and 5. And, and, and anyway, all people were coming forward. And, and I said, okay, whatever, what do you want? What do you want from Jesus? Take it, take it, take it. And this lady back there said, no, nobody sitting here was not you, definitely not you. She said, what, what do you want? And she pointed to the single man who was working for me on the platform and said, I want him. And I said, take it, take it, take it. Oh, my, 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 my. I wasn't even listening to people, let alone listening to God. Make sure you can say, he has said, so I may boldly say. Now, the surest word is the scriptures, scriptural words, but even, even then, we need the revelation of the Spirit as to how it's going to work out in our lives. So, Okay, what does he say? So we may boldly say, what? What is the consequence of God saying, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, so that we can be bold and declare, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. Oh, well, are we living in fear of what man can do to us? You, go, you come with me where I've just been. We never went the same way twice to go to where we were going. High level security. And every single one of those people who'd come to faith in Christ by revelation of the Holy Spirit, many of them through television, 30% of them recognized me from the Al Malikut. 
programs and other programs. And when you hear their stories, I tell you, where perhaps they would have reason to be afraid, they're careful and not stupid, but they're not afraid. They're not afraid. They've recently begun filming their little church meetings, which they hold in homes, filming them with everybody appearing on the camera and putting them online and in the local language. And many people are coming because Christians are prepared to be bold. Amen? Now, what is happening in our society is that we have become the, um, the odd people out. There was a time when the basic values of family, Christian values, moral, spiritual values were embedded in the nation. But generations after generations have come and eroded much of that. And so now we are the ones who look odd and weird and bizarre. Now, let me just make a point there. Just because we are right, it doesn't mean to say everything we do and everything we say is right. Particularly the way we say it. Particularly the way we say it. So we need a lot of wisdom to speak genuinely with the love of Jesus Christ. But my problem is this. Without us knowing it, many of you have become silent. You won't speak up at work about Christ. And others will speak up. And they're the ones sometimes with so-called minority rights. And you were, they, they will get, the, the, their uh, message will, will win the day. But I want you tonight to receive a new spirit of boldness. If God has spoken to you, what can anybody do to you? Amen and amen. Now give him a big praise. Now give him a big praise. And the truth that we proclaim is the truth that will endure and it will last right up until that day when ultimate reality will appear. And we'll be so glad that we stood with him. All right. Now, at the same time, it goes. With, it talks about praying for leaders. Remember, though, verse seven. Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their faith. Ruling over you is about leadership. Now, then, um, many people will preach to say, "Oh, you hear what it says? Remember the leaders. Obey them. I'm a leader. Obey me. Go make me my lunch." <laughs> But this is another, it's a real cry from my heart. How I want you to remember your leaders from this church, some of the network churches or wherever you're from. How will you remember them? Please remember them in prayer. Remember them in prayer. Don't criticize. I mean, if there's issues you want to share, share. But because not all, leaders aren't always right. But the point is, Pray for them, pray for them, pray for them because God is bringing together leadership gifts and skills that some of us have developed over many, many years. It's going to take a, a, a generation of leaders, mature leaders who are going to be able to pastor and lead the people of God into the blessings of the next season. But also, and we must not stumble at this, God is going to raise up many, many new leaders and young people in positions of leadership. Um, let me just identify you, not necessarily conferring leadership on you, but let me identify you as a generation. If you are 30 years and younger, would you please stand to your feet? Would you do that for me? If you're 30 years or younger, stand to your feet. So don't worry about that. I mean, I see a lady of 57 standing because she says 30 years or younger. I'm younger. All right. Okay. All right. I want, I want you all to look at me. All, all, all you people, look at me. Okay, look at me. Up here, up here. Okay. Up here, up here. Online and also there in, in St. John's. Now listen to me very carefully. You are a chosen generation. Now, I've had that confirmed to me, not just because I had that conviction, which I believe was from the Holy Spirit, but I've met and talked to people of your generation. 
God is preparing you for the new season, the new structures, the new anointings, the new ministries. All right? So keep, watch this space, keep focused on Christ and do whatever he tells you to do. And first thing is learning to recognize his voice. Remember Samuel? He thought Eli was calling him. I know he said, this is the Lord. All right? Let me say it again. You are a special chosen generation. If I could, and I pray to God I might be able to, I would gladly give the rest of my life and ministry to you, this generation. That's how important you are. Don't let the devil get in. Be strong. Keep the main thing the main thing. And very soon, you'll be teaching us how to do it. Give Jesus a big praise. All right. God bless you. God bless you. You may be seated. All right. So we're just about on time, coming now to the, the, last, the last point. The foundation of the rock of Christ, confidence in his word, and now boldness to proclaim his word. Bold believers in the word of God. Even Jesus used the word of God in his battle against the enemy. Jesus was being tried and tested by the enemy and he could have just said, who do you think you are? Do you know who I am? Before, before you were ever created in the form of the angel, before you were created, before you fell, I was eternally seated at the right hand of the Father. How dare you, pipsqueak? Get out of here. Now, he could do that. But he didn't. Why? Because he, amongst other things, was giving us an example of how we fight our battles. Okay? But apart from that, he was showing us the absolute authority of Jesus and his word. And so he spoke the word over the enemy's life. The world has, word has got to be in our hearts and in our mouth. Bold believers in his word. Know your Bible. Go to Bible school or sign up for extra study so that you can get deeper and deeper and deeper. We try to uh, develop the teaching ministry publicly here on Sundays, but we have many, many more things to do. We want all the ministries to be exhibited, apostles and prophets and pastors as well as teachers, but there is a time where you need to feed on the Word of God. Now is the time to feed, get extra nutrition, because you're going to be strong, okay? Content of your faith, understanding what you believe and why you believe it, and then most important of all, not just the content of your faith, but the intent, which is love. That's what it's all about. All the study of the Bible is of no value unless it shapes your character in love. And I found sometimes the know-it-alls, the people who know everything, they know every scripture and every verse all the time, and yet they don't even know how to love their neighbor or how to love their brother. The person who is steeped in the Word of God is going to be encouraged and strengthened in the character of God, which is all about love. I've heard stories of people saying truthful things but saying them so harshly that they've no more audience and then they condemn them to hell straight there and then. People of God, the best way we exhibit God is through love. And the love that I'm talking about here is agape love. It is love of God, the love of God. All the other loves, friendships and, and relationships are important, but the quality of this agape, it only comes from God. Some of my friends are saying, where do you get that? Somebody wrote to me recently and said, I believe, I believe you, there isn't any person in this world that you hate. I don't know, how can I hate somebody? My heart is full of love. All right. Now then, here is something very important. One of the reasons why we don't grapple with the love of, love of God for others is because we've not learned to, I would say the term, love ourselves. Now, in many ways, that is a contradiction because love is other orientated. So better to say, accept yourself and rest in the love of God. 
you are exactly the person that God made. Now, of course, much of our life was spoiled and ruined, and that's when he says deny the self. He means deny the old life and embrace your who you are in Christ. But who you are in Christ is not a million miles away from who you are as he made you, as he intended you to be. So in other words, one of the problems that people have, and one of the things, we don't wait another year. Don't move forward into the new year very long before you discover the richness of God's love for you, healing the rejections, healing the hurts, healing the failures in your life so that you can stand up and be secure in who you are in Christ. It's not self-love in as much as my name is Colin Dine. I love myself. I love myself. I think I'm a really wonderful person. I say in the morning, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And of course, the mirror speaks back to me. No, 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 no. It's not a worldly sense of self-love, but there is a deep abiding love that transforms us from the inside out. And when you are secure in who you are, nobody, nobody will ever shake you. Whatever they say, nobody will shake you. You'll not be threatened by what they say. You will not be threatened by what they believe. You will not be threatened by what they do because you know that you are secure in who you are in Christ and you're rooted and grounded on the rock and we shall not be shaken. And this leads us finally into this moment, this time of learning to be bold proclaimers of his word. Boldness to name Christ in public. With wisdom. Oh, yay, oh, yay, oh, yay. I'm a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ and I speak with my tongue. Mm. I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. There is, don't cast your pearls in, in, in wrong areas. But there is, you know, whether there is a boldness to stand for Christ at the right time. You don't have to do it with noise. Don't have to do it obnoxiously. Please don't allow that. And boldness to defend the faith. And boldness to challenge what others believe. And the greatest gift you can give to a person who doesn't yet know Jesus is the knowledge that you are secure in your foundation in Christ and by implication, their foundation is going to crumble. And we see it all over over the world because God is shaking the things that can be shaken to manifest that which cannot be shaken, to manifest his kingdom in our lives and hearts.